In the late 1960s, the first crude oil from the Gippsland and Bass Strait oil fields was piped ashore to a gathering terminal at Long Island Point near Western Port. From here, much of it had to be transported to a mobile Esso refinery at Altona near Melbourne and the Shell refinery at Carayo near Geelong. First for manufacture into refined products and then for eventual distribution to the public. Seagoing tankers were first used, but it was soon foreseen the 100 trips per year necessary would grow to 200 before long, and the use of either rail or road would involve 600 tankers a day. By the 1980s, almost double that number. So it was realized that a pipeline was needed. It would be the safest, most practical and economic way of solving the problem. There is nothing particularly new about the idea of a pipeline to transport crude oil, but the initial proposal in 1969 to lay a section of this particular line under Port Phillip Bay was opposed by conservationists to such an extent that the government refused a permit. Late in 1970, the government approved an alternative land route that would involve an expenditure of $14 million in the laying of the 84 miles of pipeline. For much of the distance, existing easements could be used, but 28 miles of streets and roads would have to be traversed through railroads, parks, highways, canals and rivers in 14 different municipalities from Western Port Bay through to Geelong. And it would be necessary to meet the multiplicity of requirements of government departments, the Board of Works, the Country Roads Board, the Victorian Railways, Tramways, Harbour Trust and local councils. At the outset, WAG Pipeline Proprietary Limited and its Shell Mobile SO partners made sure that all householders along the route were personally informed about the project and what it meant to them. Good afternoon, madam. Good afternoon. Mr. Roxbury, is it? That's right. Hi, my name's Mr. Roxbury from WAG Pipeline Company. Yes. I've dropped in to let you know about the pipeline coming along in front of your place. Mr. Roxbury usually leave this letter with residents to give them the background please. Pipeline. You may care to read it later on. But so far as the trenching is concerned in front of your place, uh, you will have noticed, I think, down the road towards uh, the next street with the machinery and the ditches being dug down there. Yes, I have. Uh, it should be up past your home in about all three or four days, I'd say. There'll be a fair amount of noise and some congestion out there with the big machinery. But I don't think it'll inconvenience you very much. Will I be blocked taking the car in and out the driveway? No, Mrs. Roxburgh, excepting while they're actually digging the ditch in front of your gate or driveway. Well, Mrs. Roxburgh, that booklet will answer most of the questions that anyone is likely to ask about the pipeline. Pipeline Technologists Proprietary Limited, a firm with much international experience, was selected to carry out the design and supervise the construction work. Consideration had to be given to varying soil conditions, and the pipes prepared accordingly. All rolled in Australian mills and all conforming to the rigid specifications laid down by government authorities, they are meticulously cleaned and checked. The majority are coated with coal tar enamel, impregnated with fiberglass and left wrapped. The 16 inch pipes are clad in yellow jacket, a high density polythene plastic of extreme durability. The open country sections along the route were relatively easy going. The project team saw to it that work in these sections proceeded rapidly. But naturally, elsewhere in both outer suburban and inner suburban areas, there were many deviations in the route. 
so some of the pipes had to be bent accordingly. This operation was performed in the field where the bends were mostly long and gradual. But in some locations the bends were much sharper and had to be specially fabricated by heating processes. Sometimes railways were crossed over. Sometimes bored under, with no interference to rail traffic. The route included considerable distances along suburban streets. And though some slight inconvenience was caused to local residents, this was only temporary. The contractors took a great deal of care to maintain good relationships at all times with business houses and property owners, in particular by ensuring that householders were always able to use their driveways. Even golfers found their game not only uninterrupted, but if anything, slightly more interesting as the pipeline progressed. Throughout the project, safety aspects were of prime concern. Every weld was x-rayed to ensure a perfect job was done. Thicker pipes were used and buried at greater depths in all city locations, and the whole line was pressure tested at many times the load it will ever be required to withstand. Excavation work proceeded slightly ahead of the actual laying to avoid delays. In some cases, extensive tunnelling operations were needed to make sure that traffic in heavily built up areas was not disturbed. To further minimise traffic impediments, the soil is carted away as it is excavated and replaced with clean new material as backfilling is completed. It took several months to prepare the river crossing. In this section of the pipeline, additional safety precautions were taken by scooping out a 15-foot channel in the river in which the pipeline was to be buried. After this was prepared, the river was closed to traffic for a few hours one Sunday and the pipeline, weighted down in a concrete sheath, was slipped across under the riverbed. The net result of it all a $14 million project, which thanks to the great cooperation of all concerned, contractors, suppliers, householders, councils, government departments and many other organisations, took less than 12 months to construct. The project, which despite its complexity, caused minimum inconvenience to the citizens of a huge metropolis, which left not a single scar along its 84-mile route, and which now ensures that vital supplies of crude oil flow to their destination silently, invisibly, safely and efficiently. <laughs>